and help me, I need more articles. Uh, I'm going to be describing how to find more articles and more of the articles that what we're going to talk about is what I like to call looking backwards, uh, where we're going to use the reference list, and looking forwards, where we're going to use the time cited. Then we'll talk about keywords and subject terms and Boolean operators. First off, let's start out with this uh, familiar looking article, Monsters in My Head. Now, uh, I mentioned that we have cited uh, references 52. If we click that, we see here that we have 52 articles that we can look at. And this is, in general, what I mean by looking backwards. Uh, looking at the references. And I don't just mean going to this list and pulling something out, but going to this list and going through it and looking for titles that look interesting. And when you see a title that looks interesting, click on the uh, link to the abstract page and read the abstract. If the abstract looks interesting to you and your topic, then get the article and read it and see if that article is worthwhile. So not just look at lists, but actually look at lists to find articles to read. And that's what I mean by looking backwards. These are from the reference list, so there are articles that were uh, written before our key article. And now I'm going to be talking about looking forwards. Just as with the reference list, we looked backwards in time from when our key article or starting article was written, using the time cited list, we're going to look forward in time. I know that sounds science fiction-y, but it's actually very useful. Now, we can't use Monsters in My Head because it was just published, and it had no time cited in this database. So I had to go back uh, until pretty much 1999 to find some juicy ones, and number 101 is trauma, expo uh, trauma exposure among children with uh, oppositional defiant uh, disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And you notice that it's full text. We have 23 references and time cited in the database 34. So I'm going to go click that link, time cited in the database, assuming, of course, this is a key article that I've read, and I say, oh, this is what I'm really looking for in more articles, so I'm going to click Time Cited in the Days. And here I have a list of 34 articles which have been published after 1999. And, for example, this first one by Thibet was published in 2008. And this article by Thibet in 2008 cited the other article in its reference list, as did the Davis article, as did the Moser article. All of these articles in this list cited in their own reference list that article that we started out with a slide ago. Time Cited tells you who cited an article after it was published. As I said before, in their 2008 article, Thibet et al. cited Ford et al. study from 1999. And indeed, what I've done is I've clicked through to the reference list of Thibet's article, and I go down, and here it is, number 16, Ford, trauma expo exposure among children with oppositional defiant disorder. So, if you have an article that's published, say, in 1999 or 2003, you can see who's been using it after 1999, and that's very useful. But again, you're not just going to this list and randomly pulling uh, articles. You're, if you see a title that looks interesting, you'll click on it, read the abstract. If the abstract looks interesting, then you'll get the article. Another way to find more articles and more articles of the ones you want is using the subject terms. I've introduced the subject terms before. We're back with monsters in my head. And so here we see subject terms are diagnosis, PTSD, sexual abuse, survivors, and symptoms. So what I'll do is I'll take one of the one or two of those subject terms and I'll enter them in. And since I'm going to use more than one subject term, I'll have to combine them. And we'll combine them using what we call Boolean operators. If you haven't run across this in math or computer science, Boolean operators are logical operators that allow you to combine or separate things. 
in PsycInfo, we would like to make sure that all of our Boolean operators are capitalized, every letter of them capitalized, that allows PsycInfo to recognize them as operators. Uh, the operators that we use are AND, OR, or NOT most often. AND uh, brings us intersections, and this usually returns fewer hits. OR brings us unions, and usually returns more hits. And NOT causes PsycInfo to ignore the next term. For example, let's say I was interested in PTSD about sexual abuse, but not about war. I get a lot of hits for PTSD about war, so I'll form a search post-traumatic stress disorder, not war. And so what I do is I go up to the search box in PsycInfo, I type in post-traumatic stress disorder, capital A, capital N, capital D. Sexual abuse, notice that the uh, two phrases are in quotation marks, so PsycInfo will treat them as one term. And I hit search, and these are the search results. Remember, for post-traumatic stress disorder, I had something like 15,000 hits. Now it's reduced it to 1,067 hits. So by using AND, I'm narrowing down the hits to articles that I'm only interested in. And for example, I can add survivor. So now I'm interested in PTSD among sexual abuse survivors. And I've gone from 1,000 hits to 244. And by doing this, I can narrow down the number of you know, articles that I'm getting returned to the articles that I'm only interested in. And one thing I need to point out to you is EBSCO lies to us all the time. If you notice from the last slide, there was nothing on the hit page, the reference, pa the result page, about this being a full text article. So you say, oh, well, this is not full text online. Tough luck. No. Uh, if you click Find It at CUNY, uh, you'll discover that, yes, indeed, it is full text. EBSCO only sometimes tells us whether or not something's online or not. It's something with the way CUNY's library computer interacts with EBSCO's uh, computer. So keep that in mind as you're doing research. And that's it for this uh, slideshow presentation. I say goodbye to you with a picture of a Datsun B210. Uh, this is not a picture of my first car, but this is the same model and the same color of my first car uh, that I got back in 1984. So goodbye and good research.